Good morning. This is Dave Gowans from Keller Williams Lake Taps and 72 Sold in Pawnee Lake, Washington, uh, near Lake Taps, Tacoma, Washington, and Seattle, Washington. And this morning I'm talking about uh, sellers, home homeowners, and uh, when it's time to sell that home, uh, the different ways there are to sell. Uh, there are four or five different ways that you can sell your home. And depending on the situation, uh, the situation of the seller, uh, you may choose one or the other, but uh, without having awareness of all these different ways that you can sell your home, uh, it's uh, homeowners do risk uh, choosing the wrong method uh, for their situation. Uh, specifically, uh, well, we'll get right into it. So <clears throat> I'm just going to talk about the first uh, way a lot of people uh, think about selling their home around Seattle and Tacoma is uh, doing a for sale by owner. Uh, and that's uh, where the owner of the home puts their home on the market on their own. Uh, they uh, put a sign in the yard if they're going to do that. They put uh, information about the home out on the internet on their own. And uh, sometimes they'll even pay a uh, some sort of a service to get the home in the MLS for them, uh, since a typical homeowner doesn't have access to the MLS. Uh, so there are services that you could pay that'll do it, do that for you for several several hundred dollars. Um, but that's the for sale by owner method. And what happens is, uh, if a buyer does see your home and does come along uh, and place an offer, you you are then basically on your own trying to figure out and negotiate the offer, make sure all of the documents uh, and the terms of the deal are documented, uh, make sure any inspections or whatever uh, occur uh, are documented. And then you have to work with an escrow company or an escrow officer of some kind to actually make the transaction uh, happen. So that's the FISBO thing. Totally doable. Um, a homeowner can do that. It's just a lot of work. And uh, if most homeowners are not marketing specialists, they're not paperwork administrators, they're not uh, uh, escrow officers or title officers or anything like that. So um, it's it really makes sense to just hire people who do that every day to let them do it. The same reason we don't uh, perform surgery on ourselves or uh, start knocking out walls in our home unless we've done that before or we're qualified to do that kind of stuff. All right, so that's for sale by owners, otherwise known as FISBOs. By the way, if you do try to sell your home as a for sale by owner, you can expect a lot of phone calls from real estate brokers because all of us call for sale by owners because we know sooner or, the, sooner or later, eight out of 10 for sale by owners will hire an agent to sell their home for them because it's actually not not actually that easy to sell a home on your own. Uh, so that's just a side note. Uh, so the other uh, option here is uh, something called a wholesaler. And anybody who owns a home today uh, has probably already received mail from people like this, that like a, a card, a postcard or something that has come in the mail that says, we want to buy your house for cash. Uh, that is usually going to be an investor or a wholesaler. What a wholesaler does is they come along to a homeowner, they uh, offer them uh, usually a price for their home. Uh, uh, they offer to make a cash purchase on the home, usually for a price that is below the current market value of the home, uh, oftentimes substantially below. And then uh, what they do is they try to get that, uh, that deal or that agreement on paper. And then they turn around, try to turn around and assign that contract to an, an end buyer who then pays full retail price for the home in its current condition. Even if it's a messed up home that needs a lot of work, there's still a retail value on a messed up home. So they're going to come along and they're going to try to sell it for retail value to some investor and they keep the difference. That's what a wholesaler does. So, for example, if you have a $400,000 home, uh, a wholesaler might call you and say, uh, yeah, uh, do you want to sell your $400,000 home? I can get you a cash offer. Uh, and they won't even say it's a $400,000 home. They'll just say your home at whatever address. They know it's a $400,000 home, but they're going to they're gonna offer to buy it for cash, buy it easily, 
and help you avoid, I'm air quoting here, avoid expensive real estate commissions. Okay. Uh, but what they're going to do is they're going to, they're going to give you an offer that is a percentage of the estimated retail value of that home. So if it's a retail value, let's say you go on Zillow and look at this estimate and we use that as an estimate of what the value might be. Let's say Zillow says your estimate is 400,000. That uh, wholesaler is very likely to offer you 300,000 for the home and then turn around and try to sell it to an investor for 375. Uh, that way, it's attractive to the investor. The investor is getting it for less than the four hundred thousand, but he's the wholesaler is also making money as a middleman when they assign the contract. That difference of seventy five thousand dollars is going to go into his pocket. So that's how a wholesaler works. Uh, they can do it uh, by using contract assignments, like I just talked about. But there's other ways for them to do it too. Uh, don't need to get into all that now. Investors. Uh, is a third way. You can find investors. These are people who actually buy places uh, and they either buy and fix them up and hold them and rent them out or they buy them and live live in them with the intent to hold them for a while as an investor. Some people do it uh, as a speculation, hoping that the value of the property will go up. Uh, some people do it as a buy and hold forever uh, rental type of a scheme where you have, it's not a scheme, it's just investing. But uh, it's uh, where you buy a house and you rent it out and you let renters pay your mortgage and basically pay down the house for you over time. And it ends with you owning a house outright, which is a tremendous asset. And usually, by the way, after a decade or two have gone by, that house is increasing value quite, quite substantially as well. So it actually ends up being a really good investment. So investors. Uh, are kind of like wholesalers are looking to buy at a discount. So if you're willing to sell at a discount, uh, you can sell to an investor. You could probably get uh, a higher percentage of your actual value of your home from an investor. But the bottom line here is if you're talking to a wholesaler, they're going to want somewhere between 10 and 40% of your equity in the transaction. If you have a $400,000 house and they, they offer you 300,000 cash purchase, that's 75% of the value of your home. That means that they're charging you 25% of your equity for the, per, for the pleasure of selling your home for you or getting it sold. That's awfully expensive, especially when you compare it to a real estate broker who's going to charge you a maximum of 6% most likely. And that's one quarter of what a wholesaler is trying to take from you. Uh, an investor uh, is going to need a discount as well. You know, they may uh, an investor in that situation may offer you three fifty uh, or three seventy five, and they're just looking to get uh, a little bit on the front end. They're going to fix a property up to add value to it, and then rent it out for the purpose of building equity over time, as well as having cash flow. Uh, it's important for a rental to have cash flow so that you can cover future repairs and stuff like that. So the first we talked about uh, for sale by owner, then there's the wholesaler method in which, uh, so at FISBO, you're trying to get full retail price on your own with no help. That's hard. Uh, wholesaling is pretty easy, but you're giving up a substantial chunk of your equity. With investors, you're still giving up some equity, but usually it's not quite as substantial as with the wholesaler, but you're still giving up way more equity to the tune of 10 to 20 to 30% of your equity. Um, whereas again, real estate professionals are going to charge you a maximum of about 6%, which is way less than 20% or even 10%. Uh, okay. Fourth way. Uh, I just was talking about real estate brokers as a fourth way. This real estate brokers that are licensed with the state who uh, are also realtors, um, uh, they try to uh, not only keep their license, which means they have to act uh, in a certain way to assist uh, buyers, but they also have to, uh, as in a fiduciary manner, but uh, they're also looking to get the, the sellers, uh, the sellers, the highest possible price. I'm going to go ahead and pause this real quick and uh, probably uh, start up again here. Hold on a second.
All right. So back into it here, talking about real estate brokers. So real estate brokers are professionals that are fiduciaries that are licensed by the state. And they try to uphold standards of, uh, of serving the clients uh, above themselves uh, or the general public. So uh, it makes a lot of sense if a broker, a real estate broker, is going to charge only uh, 5 or 6% to list your home and sell it for you. They're going to take care of the negotiation. They're going to take care of all the paperwork. They're going to align all of the title and escrow functions. They're going to coordinate with the buyers or the buyer's agents to make all of the inspections and whatever else has to happen, happen. And then at the end, you pay them 5 to 6% of what you made off the transaction as opposed to giving up 10 to 40 to 50% of your equity when you're talking about a five hundred thousand dollar house, which is about the average price in Pierce County right now uh, of a home, if you're talking about a five hundred thousand dollar house, the difference between six percent and ten percent, four percent on that is four thousand dollars per. That's twenty thousand dollars on a five thousand dollar house. That's the difference between going with an investor, a wholesaler, or a broker, and that's ten percent. Most of those wholesalers and, and investors are trying to get way more than 10% out of you. They're, they're going to try to talk you as low as you'll go. They're going to try to get 50% out of you, 40%, 30%. How much more is that on a $500,000 house than a 6% real estate commission? And by the way, they don't collect all that commission. They pay a lot of stuff with that commission before they ever see a do dollar of it. So uh, these folks are not trying to get rich off of any one sale. They're trying to provide a service as a professional to help you get the highest possible price, which brings me to the program I use, 72 Sold. 72 Sold is designed to get a seller the highest possible price. In fact, 72 Sold has been studied. Now they just completed their fifth study, independent study of this program, and it has shown for the fifth time that this program averages getting a home seller about 10% more than the average sale price from a normal real estate transaction that happens in the MLS. That's 10% more from using this specific program. If you factor in that a real estate broker is charging you 6%, let's say, and that real estate broker gets you 10% more than a normal real estate salesperson is going to get you, well, that 10% more that you just got just paid for his 6% sales commission and got you an additional 4% more. 4% again on a $500,000 home is $20,000. You buy a car with that very nearly. So those are real estate brokers. By far, hands down, the best way to sell a home. Uh, and your home doesn't have to be in perfect condition. It can be in as-is condition. It could need some work. No matter what the condition is, the real estate broker can expose it to the entire market to all buyers at the same time and get all interested buyers to compete for your home, thereby getting you the highest possible price. So if you need to do that, shoot me a text 253-213-0091 and we'll get that started. Anywhere in Pearson, King County, uh, near Washington or in Washington, near those two counties or in those two counties, we can make stuff happen. The fifth way of selling your home is iBuyers. This way is kind of uh, not super available anymore. It was very popular in 2000 and 2001 where these corporations, Zillow was even one of them. Redfin was another. There was a, uh, uh, and then there was these iBuyer platforms where individuals were doing this. But basically these companies swoop in, offer you cash for your house and they buy it and they hold it or rent it or flip it or whatever. Uh, basically, it's a way of being a wholesaler or an investor online uh, as a company or as an individual and uh, instead of doing it in person. So, uh, again, this is kind of going the way this is uh, way less popular in 2023 than it was in recent past years, uh, but they're out there still. They basically function the same way as a wholesaler does or an investor does, but they're remote. So uh, there's essentially only really the four most popular ways, FISBO, wholesaling, investors, and brokers. Again, I can't recommend highly enough to use a broker because it's a professional that's serving you, not themselves. Uh, whereas an investor and a wholesaler, they're serving themselves and trying to get out of you whatever they can talk you out of.
uh, and that's the fact. So uh, Dave Gowans, Keller Williams, Lake Taps, uh, 72 sold program director in Tacoma in the Seattle area. Uh, shoot me a message. No matter where you are in the United States, I can find a real estate broker who is highly qualified and highly skilled who can get you top dollar for your home. Uh, all it takes is one phone call from me with your contact information and you will be started. Uh, 72 sold sells homes in about eight days. Uh, and that's the goal after we get it sold in eight days, then you've got about, depending on the buyer, somewhere between three and five weeks of escrow time and you will be closed and clear of your property. That's what you need. Shoot me a text, 253-213-0091. Dave Downs, Keller Williams, Lake Tax, Taps and 72 sold. Have a great one.